setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you joined me. Another day, another dollar, another podcast episode. Today we're going continuing on with part two of our mental health. We'll be right back. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. So we're continuing on with our podcast on mental health. We're going to be doing this for the next four days talking about mental health experiences in the workplace or all around us. So, and I told you that I was going to tell you stories of, of incidents that affected me. And I want to call this story is that we really can't judge. We can see somebody that looks distraught. We can look at, at people that look crazy, but we find out that there's a, There is a different story. I was flying from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles. And somehow I got bumped up to first class, so I was in the first class section. The seat in front of me, there was a a man and uh, the one next to him was a woman. Now, the woman was, I could tell that she was a little haughty. I mean, not haughty, but that's the wrong word, but somebody that thought that they were really important, that they were better than everybody else. You know, the hair was perfect. The jewelry was perfect. The pantsuit she was wearing was perfect. (laughs) She was showing that she was somebody. The individual who was sitting beside her was a, a male, and there was something up. He, he was fidgeting, he was acting strange, he was looking the strange part like he, there could be an issue with him. So the lady next to him decided she didn't want to sit next to him. He looked crazy, he looked nuts, he looked like there was something wrong with him. So she went up to the stewardess and said, you need to change this guy because he's nuts. He's crazy. I do not want to sit beside him. So the stewardess came back to me and wanted to know if I would change seats with the lady. And I said, well, I don't think there's a problem with that. So I changed seats. And I could tell there was something up, there was something wrong, but it wasn't one of those things that was a conflict that I saw was going to happen. It was just that an individual saw this person a certain way and didn't want to participate in his actions or his mood. So I went up and sat beside the guy. And he goes, you know what, I'm so embarrassed, I'm... I'm I'm really sorry I didn't want you to have to move your seat just because she didn't want to sit beside me. He knew what was going on. He knew that the lady was agitated with how he was acting. And I knew there was something wrong. But you know, when you see something wrong, you have to ask, what is the story? As a mediator, I have to ask that question every single day. What is your story? So I looked at him, and that's exactly what I said. I said, what is your story? 
And he looked at me rather surprised. But I was smiling. But he looked at me rather surprised. He put his head down and he said, Well, I'm having to fly back to Los Angeles. By this time we were up in the air, so we had a lot of time to talk. He says, I'm on my way back to Los Angeles. My dad is in the hospital. He's comatose. He will not make it. So the family has asked me to go back and make that final decision because I'm the person on the will who has the health directive. And I've got to decide whether or not if I should pull this plug in this life. Now, what's interesting is that a month before I had to make that same decision on my mom. My mom was in so much pain. And I had to make that decision. I had to talk to the doctors. And I couldn't talk to my mom because she could no longer talk. She could no longer express her will. But she did give me a directive on what I should do. In fact, several months before that, I had sat down with my mom and I had said, okay, you need to tell me what you want done with your life when something happens. We didn't know at that time that anything was going to happen. But she went into the hospital on a New Year's, no, no, on a Christmas Eve and she passed away on a New Year's Day. One week. She even drove herself to the hospital. But I told her at the time when we were doing her medical directive, I said, you need to tell me what you want. I'm not going to tell you what you want. You tell me what's in your heart that you want. So I knew because I had talked it through with my mom. We had put it in writing. We had gotten it notarized. We knew exactly what we needed to do. So the decision for me was not that difficult because my mom had already told me what to do. Unfortunately, the young man sitting next to me did not have that same conversation. He knew what was said in the will of what what, what the father wanted done. But he did not have that conversation and talk it over with his dad before anything happened. So he had this heavy burden on his on his on his chest and on his head and on his shoulders and his heart of what to do, what decision to make for his father who was laying in a coma. Father was 80-some years old. What do you do except follow the directive of the will? But that, if if you've never been to that situation, it's a very difficult decision to make because what happens if I pull, but they continue to to live on in agony? What do we do? All these things are going through your mind. I know I've been there. So we talked. And I told him, listen, I, I've just gone through this. This is the thought process that went through my mind. And I told him everything that went through my heart, everything that went through my mind. And he says, you know, that's the exact same way. Now, when he got onto the plane, he wanted to drink heavily. Because if you drink heavily, that's a good way of forgetting everything that you have to be responsible for. So he sat there and we talked. And we probably talked for a good two hours. And he reached over and he said, you know what, I'm so thankful that you were pulled into this seat because at least I was able to talk it out. Now, when I see people, there's always a reason why people are agitated, always a reason why they are dealing with something. There's a story behind every agitation. There's a story around every conflict and every story can have a good resolution as long, one thing, is if you talk it out. 
So I have this feeling that somehow God must have known, okay, you have got to change seats, Mike. (laughs) And so he changed my seats, and I sat next to this guy. And we talked. And he told me everything that was going through his thought process and through his mind. And he even asked me to buy him a drink. And I said, no, we're not buying you a drink. (laughs) We're going to talk this thing through. He says, okay, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. shouldn't have done it. But it's funny how one person, one lady, looked at an individual who was agitated, who was upset, who was something was wrong, and didn't even have the common courtesy to say, hey, what's your story? What's the problem? You know, sometimes we have to listen. Not just sometimes, but always we have to listen. When people talk, they release a whole bunch of sadness and anger and all sorts of human emotional feelings. And luckily, thank goodness, thank God that I was in that seat that day because it could have developed into something worse. That lady that was sitting next to him could have made it into a whole drama session and gotten him kicked off the plane. Never judge people until you've talked with them. Mental health is one of these things that will affect us. As I've told you before in my introductory in part one, it affects us everywhere we go. There is someone that needs to talk, someone that needs to get things off their shoulder. And if you are an employer of a company, You need to spend more time listening to your employees. If they're having problems at home, if they're having problems at work, if they're having issues in church, whatever it may be, we need to listen more and let them talk it out. And if you've got a one bit of good advice, luckily I had advice because I had gone through that very same human emotion of having to Pull the plug on someone I loved. Thank God I was there to talk him through all the pain and the agony that you go through and know that he's making a good decision because that's what he wanted. That's what his father wanted. That's what my mom wanted. So never judge a book by its cover because sometimes the the inside of that book is the best read you'll ever hear. And the expression of those words in that book can stop a lot of conflict. But it also takes you and I to be able to see people who are having a mental health day, a bad mental health day. I, I, you know, sometimes I, I don't get it why some people have to be so high and mighty and not just ask a simple question. Hey, what's your story? What's, what's your problem? Talk it through. I have been through some stressful situations in my own life, and I know what that mental health thing can do to you. I have been through some very sticky moments where I did not know if life and death was a future for me. I have been through situations in my business where I didn't know if we were going to meet peer payroll or if we were going to meet our existing bills, but it always worked out. It always worked through. But it worked through because we were all sat down and we talked about the issue, what we needed to do. Communication plays 
an important ingredient in everybody's life to have a successful life. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to sit there and listen. In our businesses, I have always had an open door policy where people could come in and talk to me about various different problems that they were having. And I think I've heard almost every story that an employee could have. I've heard stories of abuse. I've heard stories of people cheating. I've had I've had people where they've come in. A, a female one day and then a male a few months later. I have had married people who were married and then became gay in the middle of the process. I have seen the turmoil and the conflict, but where we were able to to create less stress is by talking it through. Never be judgmental. Never be in the spot where you're putting people down. Be in the spot where you're trying to help people and help and let them talk the process through. Because a lot of things that happen at home will affect things at work. And when you let conflict build within your companies, you are wasting so much time, wasting uh, productivity, wasting money, wasting things not getting done on time. Because the the... The the thought process is turning over and over and over and over again because they have no one to talk to. They have no one to talk about. Every company should have a mental health discussion. And then from that discussion, put into a mental health plan of how you can deal with mental health at the office. Because once you let mental health g- expand and become bad, and become worse, and become a conflict within your organization, sometimes you can never pull it back. And you may lose other good employees because of the situation. And we as employers or business owners, we have got to be cognizant of what our employees are going through. Now, I know that a lot of you are out there saying, my job is to run a business. My job is to make money. My job is to produce a product or a service. My job, and you can go on with a list of my jobs, but one list that you, or one item you know, you're not putting on that list is what your, responsi- what your responsibility is as an employer and as a listener. You don't want conflict to be build, but you want to be able to take any type of conflict and discuss it out. So as I said, no matter where you're at, you can be in the airport, you can be in the taxi cab, you can be in your office, and you will have to deal with a mental health issue. Because that is your responsibility as an employer, as a business owner, and as a human being. Now, as I said in in part one, we at the end of, of this series, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about what we can do better in the office place to deal with mental health. A good place for you to begin studying is going to is going to a website that is called headstogether.org.uk headstogether.org.uk and they've got some really wonderful stories in there that you can read and good examples and everything on how to deal with health uh, healthcare not healthcare with mental health in the workplace that's where we really need to focus on it we don't want to become branded as a, as going postal from the post office we don't want that what we want to be known is as a place where any employer can speak with an employee, and that employee feels comfortable speaking with 
anybody in the office about mental health issues, small, big, or medium, whatever the size of the problem, it should be discussed. And direction given on what they can do, where they can go to, who they can talk to. I am at the point where I think after seeing everything that has happened with the shootings in schools and in, in, in employment workplace uh, establishments, where people have lost their lives because of mental health issues. And one of my stories has to deal with one of my experiences in a workplace that became dangerous because the mental health side of it was not addressed. We need to do better. And we can do better, but we need to talk about it. Even in your weekly meetings or in your staff meetings, I bet hardly any of you have talked about mental health issues. And that's where it really needs to begin is talking about it in the workplace. Because that is where you and I are spending most of our time in our little offices up on the seventh floor working most of our hours of the day. That's where we spend it. So in those hours of the day, we need to address mental health. That's our responsibilities as employees, employers, business owners, stockholders, board members. We need to start discussing it more and putting into action within our institutions and organizations a good mental health plan. Put together mental health committees, get them going, thinking about what they can do better in, in addressing workplace conflict. Now, I do workplace conflict mediation. And you would be surprised how one little word can spark a whole conflict based upon the past experience of individuals. Mental health plays a big portion of it, a big part of it. And if we don't start talking about it, we are going to let it go bigger and bigger. You, you cannot, as I said before, you cannot count on the government to help you on any of this. It has to be an independent process that we put together within our own companies that we own. And employees should be asking it of their employers, can we have a mental health program? A lot of people, you know, every time that I put out on one of my blogs, you know, a comment that says, hey, you know what? Take a mental health day today. I have gotten comments back. We don't have time to take a mental health day. Well, yes, you do. It's just that you're not doing it. So we need to start thinking about our work environments and how, we're, how we are coping with our responsibilities because responsibilities turn into mental health issues if we do not think clearly and focus on our needs. This is Mike Lodge. If you have a question or a comment, text it to me, 818-252-5682, 818-252-5682, and I'll get you back a response. This is Mike Lodge. Stay tuned for part three of our mental health series. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This is brought to you by Lodge Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge Co., your source for sound business and tax services. This has been produced.
produced by Michael Lodge and content driven by Michael Lodge. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs.